I couldn't resist showing you the dress I just made for the summer because the summer is my favorite part of the year. I always can't wait to get to the summer and I love to do everything in the summer. I love the temperature, I love the summer clothes, I love the holidays, I love the sea, everything. And speaking of sea, we have this theme for the month of July. It's not just normal sea, it's one special animal that is especially dear to my heart. So if you like anything about the sea or this special animal, give me the thumbs up and subscribe for more nature arty bullet journaling fun with a very arty fairy. Also, let me know if you would like to see shorts. I was thinking about making short videos and although I'm a chatty person, <laughs> that's hard to narrow down her sentences, I will try to make it for you. If that's something you would like. Let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, let's set up our bullet journal. As you could guess from the intro, this month's theme is octopus, but this cover could also represent the waves if you'd prefer. I have always loved octopuses because they're so smart, playful, cute and generally friendly. And they're incredibly skillful. They can fit into tiny holes and they're so smart they can distinguish between different colored objects and so much more. If you're interested in them, there's a great documentary, My Octopus Teacher. So I always loved octopuses, but I didn't know they were so popular among other people. Last year, I had to come up with a concept for a giant painting for the HR Congress, and I chose octopus because they're multitasking like HR people, the event was at the seaside, and I could match the colors of their logo perfectly. They told me I can make things different, so I threw in this idea just for fun, but they loved it. I never thought so many people identify with octopuses. But if you're not into octopus, you could utilize this first spread as stylized waves, and it would still make for an interesting cover. Add a few splashes if you want, and maybe some bubbles, and that's it. That's the whole reason I chose the blue tones for the covers, because I wanted it to be versatile enough for a different sea theme if you choose so. Later on, you'll see I chose a different color for every spread, but they're all in the violet family, as our octopuses typically are. I usually make elaborate monthlies, but this time I chose a very simple style. Just a line a day. July is my holiday month, so I hope I will have a little bit less on my to-do list, and I shouldn't need anything fancy, since I won't check my bujo every day, most probably. If you're not into drawing, you could also just put a sticker in the corner or glue a cutout image from the magazine or something similar. I just like to draw and paint, so I seize the opportunity to do so. This octopus is in love because this is the birthday month of two of my favorite people in the whole wide world. So maybe I should rethink my to-do list after all. <laughs> I'll let you know next month how it went. Now I'm quite proud of this design. I came up with the idea of interwined and interlocked octopuses, one for each day. You could have totally left it blank and color it according to your mood if you'd like a mood tracker, but I know I won't use it this month, so I just left their big heads empty to write in whatever I want. You could also use this spread for your monthly. Or the one on the next page, or the combination of the two. On the right hand side you have a line for every day, so it's pretty much the same concept as for the simplest monthly I showed you previously. I normally don't use vertical line style, but if you're looking for a quick and simple layout design, you can't go wrong with that. The only real downside for me would be that the days are not grouped into weeks. I know I could still group 7 lines together, but I like to have Mondays below Mondays, for example. However, that's just my silly brain. Many people prefer the lines. They're easy to read and easy to find the date. And for holidays, the day of the week doesn't matter so much. So this is the time to try it. You could, however, interlock seven octopuses in a bunch together, and the cluster of octopus would represent a week in that case. But I'm not sure that would be much clearer. But I wanted to have this whole page of octopuses interlocked, so I chose this one and did the line monthly. In case you didn't know, Octopus can change color to better blend in with her surrounding, so I took the liberty of colors. Although they're never blue as the tentacles on my cover, I don't think they would mind much. <laughs> on the other page I drew some wavy lines, one for each day of the month and colored them in with different shades of blue and violet. These two spreads might look intricate, but they're actually not that difficult to draw. 
they just take some time. That's why I spared you and just cut one part. <laughs> the last spread is probably my favorite. Although the design is very simple, just a giant octopus in the left bottom corner. I still like it a lot. She looks alive to me. Or maybe that's just because I've stared at octopuses way too long and now I see them coming to life. I drew quite some octopuses for my July Bujo. And you get the next portion next week, when you'll see all my octopus weeklies. I recently heard an interview with the creator of the bullet journal method, Ryan Carroll, and his thoughts on the artistic Bujo. I loved how honest he was that he was not a huge fan of artistic bullet journal at first because it seemed like a total opposite from his minimal bullet point method but since then he changed his mind when he talked to artistic bullet journalist. Is that a word? Bullet journalist? They told him the secret. We embellished our spreads because that's what keeps us going. I know I use my bujo much more when it's pretty. I don't like to stare at the ugly to-do lists. I'm not a black and white person. I like color, <laughs> really. This makes me want to do it and makes me want to do more. So in case you're wondering, that's my why. And it also makes for a nice excuse to draw. And here's the final flip through. I really, really enjoyed this theme. I know I say that every month, but that happens when you can pick the theme yourself for something that you love to do. It's hard to go wrong, you know. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, let me know, that always makes my day. And come back next week for the Octopus Weeklies. Octopuses are very versatile and you can pose them almost however you want, so they're perfect for the weeklies. And let me know the themes you'd like to see in the comments. I am bullet journaling for quite a while now, so I tried many themes and I'm always on the lookout for the new ones. What would you like to see? Let me know in the comments. I have some ideas for August, but I have no idea what to choose for the fall. Do you have any favorites? We can make it all together and see how different they turn up. That would be fun. See you next week with some Octopus Weeklies. Bye bye!